Recently, the Air Force announced the winners of the National Space Secure Launch NSSL contract phase two. And no surprise, they went to ULA and SpaceX, the two biggest launch providers in this country. The two who have carried regularly national secure payloads. Although, to be fair, Northrop Grumman has already done some of this with the Minotaur rocket that they have. So it's not really that much of a surprise though that it went to these two players. I think 75% of the people guessed that this would be the case. One of the things though that was the most interesting is that the company ULA was actually awarded only just a tiny, tiny bit more money to do two launches as opposed to SpaceX's one. And I found this to be really curious and so I wanted to dig through the numbers and make sense of this because everyone, I'm sure all you guys are sitting there thinking, hey, SpaceX is the cheap provider, ULA is the expensive government bloated one. So why is ULA's launches cheaper? Is the Vulcan rocket that they're proposing really that much better? So let's get down to business and figure this out. The exact missions that are being carried into space are classified. Don't have knowledge of it, and even if I did, I wouldn't share it because it's classified. But in the proposal, they referenced nine standard orbits that have been referenced for some time. And I say standard orbits kind of loosely. These are actually uh, reference. Some of the reference orbits are just heavier payloads into the same orbit as some of the other ones. And in addition to this, they had two new ones that came with the NSSL contract from the previous one. These two new ones are slightly heavier payloads of the existing ones. So we have these 11 different configurations. Looking into these, we can figure out which ones of these are the most challenging. And there are three that struck me as particularly challenging. One is, is a very, very heavy payload into polar orbit. The mass is about 19 tons, which is significant. Both ULA and SpaceX obviously have rockets that can do it, but it is of some note. Another one is a geostationary transfer orbit of nine tons. And then there's a direct to geostationary orbit where you're not putting it in a transfer orbit first, you're just putting it directly there of about seven tons. And these are the three most challenging ones. So let's break down what it would actually take SpaceX to launch these. And then we'll talk about the Vulcan rocket and compare how its, its style differs. So with SpaceX, you have a number of different options. You can go anywhere from a reused Falcon 9 single core launch, which publicly costs about $50 million, to a expendable Falcon Heavy rocket, which costs about $150 million, according to the numbers that I've seen. One other thing to note is that the Falcon 9 rocket needs a larger payload fairing to be able to carry these secure payloads up into high orbits. And they also will need to have a vertical launch integration facility. There are some payloads that if you tilted them on their side ever, that they could break. If you think about it, you know, if you had some like fancy glass statue or something like that, and if you tilt it on its side, it just isn't built to handle that kind of stress. Well, all of SpaceX's missions that they've done so far have had to have been horizontal at some point in time. And to be able to launch some of these payloads, they need to be vertical. The ones that tend to do this are the ones that have very giant mirrors, hence the glass statue analogy earlier. And if you tilt these on the side, then they just don't have the support to do that. In order to make them, it just is much, much easier to make the payload work at one particular orientation, the vertical orientation, so that way structurally it'll all be sound. So these are two new capabilities that SpaceX is going to have to add. And I'm just going to throw out some numbers here. I'm going to say that the new fairing will cost about $10 million because the existing one costs about six and it just seems like a reasonable guess. I'm going to use that same number, $10 million for the vertical assembly piece. It's probably a little bit high, but we'll just call it that for the sake of it. In addition to develop these capabilities, they're going to need some R&D money. One thing to note is that phase one NSSL participants received some money to develop their rockets. And if they did not continue into phase two, then they lost their funding. So 
Blue Origin and Northrop Grumman lost their funding to develop their rockets. However, ULA still is getting at least its continued phase one to develop their Vulcan rocket. SpaceX did not win any phase one contracts. They bid Starship and that was just a little bit too far-fetched for the Air Force to fully support it at that point in time. In addition, SpaceX has received money from NASA and they wanted to give a little bit more level playing field to some of the other people, so they decided not to award things to SpaceX. However, it's worth noting that SpaceX did receive a little bit of additional funding to make these two changes to the Falcon line of rockets, the larger fairing and the vertical assembly capability that will allow them to be able to make these heavier payloads work just fine. All that being said, SpaceX cost for a rocket can go between $50 million to $170 million, keeping this vertical launch integration. In addition to that, it's estimated that about 50% of the cost of the rocket goes into extra handling that you have to do for a classified payload. There's a lot of things that you have to do. You have to have separate computer systems. You have to limit the number of people who are there at a particular time. You'll have to do more careful processing. You have to have people cleared. All of this adds extra cost. And so they pass that on to the government, which is perfectly reasonable. If you're gonna have a more stringent requirement for processing, yeah, go ahead and pass that on. So with this 50% number, you can have anywhere from maybe $80 million to $250 million for a SpaceX launch, depending on exactly what you're trying to do. For the low end missions, they can use one of the, just a standard Falcon 9. This works great for like GPS missions, for instance, and they've done this at a cost of about $90 million and presumably they can continue to do this. However, when you get into these very, very high end missions, you start to run up some pretty serious costs. Let's assume this Falcon Heavy mission that uh, presumably is what SpaceX is going to use to launch this first payload. Let's assume that it's an expendable configuration, which is theoretically possible for some of these target reference orbits that they're talking about doing. In order to do all of that, you know, it could cost $250 million. If they're launching one of these, they're presumably big giant spy satellites that listen to signals and they launch them into geostationary orbit. I think they're called Orion. We don't really know much about them because they're classified obviously, but they're these big giant things that they launch in geostationary orbit. That's the most difficult thing for SpaceX to launch is something into geostationary orbit that is seven tons. If we take all of that into account, this $250 million, it's still a big difference between that and the $313 million. Presumably this $60 million will be enough to pay for the research and development for the larger payload fairing and the vertical launch integration. Keep in mind that SpaceX developed the Falcon 9 rocket for $300 million from NASA and they also got the Dragon spacecraft from that too. So it doesn't seem unreasonable at all that $80 million will be enough to pay for all of that. Okay, so SpaceX has this huge, huge potential price difference in it. How does that compare to ULA? Well, we don't know as much about ULA's Vulcan rocket pricing, but the price estimates I've seen for it are between $100 and $130 million, depending on the configuration. The Vulcan rocket is a highly configurable single core rocket where you can add in different numbers of solid rocket motors at the bottom to increase the performance. For the high end missions like the one to geostationary orbit, they'll have to use the higher end configuration, which is estimated at about $130 million. The lower end though, they can do just perfectly fine at $100 million. If we add the same 50% for classified processing, that brings the cost to between 150 and 200 million, which is perfectly in the ballpark for what they threw their mission. Somewhere in the middle, they have two missions that are $337 million, I believe, 
it's perfectly reasonable that a Vulcan rocket would in fact do this. So it does actually seem like, at least for some instances, the Vulcan rocket's cheaper. One thing to keep in mind is ULA specifically designed the Vulcan rocket for these NSSL launches. Its sole purpose is to do that. So they, there's actually some things you can see that the highest payload configuration, its capability to bring stuff into geostationary orbit, it's just a little tiny, tiny bit above what the requirement is for the defined orbits here in the NSSL launch contract. That is not a coincidence. They're purposely designing that rocket to be able to do this. So if you look at the numbers, the Vulcan rocket is a cheaper rocket by as much as 50 to 100 million dollars to carry a payload into a, one of these really high energy orbits, while the Falcon 9 rocket is cheaper to carry them for the more everyday types of orbits. The low Earth orbit, modest payload to even the GPS type satellite range. So that's quite an interesting difference. And the bottom line is, is that ULA is doing way better than they had in the past. I saw something when I was researching this video that really caught my attention. Since the Air Force started to bid out these different launch companies to different providers, it's estimated they've saved seven billion dollars since 2013. And that's largely thanks to SpaceX and it's also thanks to ULA turning their course. ULA has lowered their launch rates because they're competing with SpaceX. And that's a wonderful thing for the space industry. It's going to take a little bit of time to get all of this figured out, but I did want to let you guys know that ULA's Vulcan rocket is actually pretty neat. And credit to the whole team there, to CEO Tori Bruno for making that direction to make this rocket. It's going to help to reduce the cost to space. And for certain missions, it certainly is worthwhile. Now, why couldn't they just launch all of these high energy payloads with a Vulcan rocket and the lower ones with the Falcon rocket? Well, the bottom line is, is they can't just put all of their eggs in one basket. You see, if one of these launch providers had an issue which caused them to no longer be able to launch, say a Falcon 9 blew up or a Vulcan blew up, and they needed to have some time off, you can't just stop everything for that. So they have to have a backup provider just in case something happens. Now, when it was just ULA as a company, the way they did that is with the Atlas and the Delta family of rockets. Having two completely distinct families of rockets allowed them to do this. Now, with two different companies, you're having an even more degree of isolation. You have Northrop Grumman's Antares rocket that will carry the Cygnus spacecraft to the space station. You have the Atlas or actually Vulcan rocket that will carry the Dream Chaser spacecraft that SNC is building, and SpaceX is carrying their own Dragon capsule into space on the Falcon 9 rocket. Three completely separate development for all three of those to be able to carry cargo to the space station. So any one of those can launch, any two of those could fail, and we can still get cargo to the space station. For launching humans to space, it's the same thing. You have ULA's rocket Boeing spacecraft versus SpaceX's rocket and spacecraft. Two completely different paths. They probably barely have any parts in common at all between the two. And as a result, they're able to make sure that we can always have access to space. It's just as important, if not more important, for the NSSL launches to be able to do this. So. Good job to the ULA team for making your costs lower. I'm sure that they're not competitive in all launches to SpaceX, but they've definitely done exactly what they intended to do, to build a single rocket that can compete with SpaceX for these high energy missions, which is what they're really aiming to do. That's the whole goal of ULA is to 
work on these high energy missions. Thank you guys for everything. Let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have. Until next time, keep on tracking. Take care.